Let's talk about James Garcia. James Garcia was shot and killed. He was 28 years old, and he was shot and killed in a parked car on the 4th of July. You can see here we have his uh, photograph right there, and he's obviously he's got some kids. He's got a family. And so this is kind of another, you know, another story. And it's 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 a sad thing every week when we have to come on and talk about another shooting. You would think that, you know, sort of in this time of extremely heightened scrutiny that there would be actually less of these. But to me, it just feels sort of anecdotally. I don't have any data to support this, that we're seeing more and more of these. These are becoming almost more common. And in a way, that makes sense because you've got people who are on very high alert. There's a lot of tension that is prevalent in our society. Police are concerned that they're under attack by you know the the, the Black Lives Matter movement and the defund the police movement and all of these sort of uh, you know different segments and different groups that are boiling up throughout society. So they feel like they're threatened. Of course, on the flip side, we as a society, people who are you know just everyday average citizens, we've got our own concerns about the police and we've got our own concern about safety, especially as it relates to encounters with law enforcement. And so, you know, a lot of people are very tense on the other side. Every time that there's an interaction with the police, as we're going to see with James Garcia's case, things can get heated. They can get escalated. Uh, it can es escalate very quickly. And, uh, you know, that that may be what happened here. So, now, let's dive into it. Let's talk about the actual story. So here's what happened. Cops were, so here's James Garcia. Cops were responding to a 911 caller who had said that this person, the, the 911 caller had said that very recently a man had attempted to stab him and he was identifying that man. So on a separate occasion, the 911 caller uh, allegedly was uh, attempted, somebody attempted to stab him. And the caller called 911, and the allegation is is that James Garcia was that person. And there's some conflicting reports about that. Did the 911 caller call and report uh, an actual stabbing, and did the police respond and find the right guy? So in other words, was James Garcia the guy who the 911 caller is claiming stabbed him a week previously? Uh, and so there's some conflicting evidence about that. Um, you know, I looked into it. Uh, Miss Faith looked into it, and there's sort of it's a gray area. There's not, not a lot of clear data on that yet. The, the, on the one side, it could be that the police found the right guy, that the 911 caller was right, and that there was a prior altercation with Mr. Garcia. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, it could have been just that James Garcia was seated in a parked car outside of his friend's house waiting to go out. Police rolled up on him. They found the wrong guy because of sort of what's going on in our world because of these heightened tensions. They... Uh, the situation got out of control. It got escalated. He didn't want to respond to the police, so he had a gun. Police saw the gun. They shot and uh, basically killed him. Yeah, we've got a lot of video today. Typically, I don't like to uh, play much of the video, but these videos are pretty benign. We have one from a body camera from an officer who rolls up after the scene, and then we have some from some civilians who are not part of law enforcement, but they are recording it. But again, they're far off, so we're not seeing sort of the same gruesome thing that we saw on uh, uh, with George Floyd. Now, it doesn't make it any less, um, you know, difficult for the family or for James. Obviously, somebody was was shot and killed in this. But what we want to do is analyze how the police responded and then also analyze how are they responding to their response? What are they doing? You know, we're seeing a lot of discussions about policy changes and Jerry Williams is addressing some of those. I've got some uh, some positive things to say about it and, of course, some negative things to say about it. So when the cops came upon uh, J uh, J James Garcia's case, they noticed that he had a, a an armed handgun basically in his lap. They didn't know if there was any connection between him and the 911 caller. But he after the fact that it's come out that it sounds like he was just sitting outside of his uh, friend's house waiting to go out when the cops showed up. They explained to him that they were investigating an aggravated assault, which would have been, of course, that you know, alleged knife stabbing that the 911 caller made previously. Uh, they told him to get out of the car, which you, you, you need to do uh, if you're if you're under investigation in Arizona. It's for officer safety. So you get out of the car. They can make sure you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that. So just at that outset, he's being a little bit combative with them. Um, it certainly doesn't you know, require somebody shooting and killing you for that. But apparently there's there's some missing information here. Cops are saying he pulled out a gun. Uh, he may have already had a gun. It you know, it 
it's going to be very curious to see exactly what happened. The body camera footage doesn't show us what happened inside the vehicle. So we're going to get there. But that's the backdrop. So the police get a call. They claim there's, the 911 caller claims there's a guy who stabbed him previously is sitting in a car. Cops roll up. He doesn't get out of the car. They see a gun. Boom, 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 boom. They fire a bunch of shots through the window of the car. He never even leaves. And then we will roll up into some body camera footage that that the police actually did release. So uh, just a quick synopsis on what that looks like. The, he was sitting in a parked car. The cops surrounded him and then they had the guns pointed directly at them. So uh, witnesses were yelling at the cops, please lower your weapons. One officer shouted, stop moving. I will effing shoot you. Then tenor show. So gunshot wound or gunshots can be heard he was taken to the hospital and pronounced dead and then you know last night of course today's wednesday on tuesday last night there were uh, a bunch of a bunch more protesters outside of our governor's house governor ducey to to protest the killing and they they have i think a lot of valid claims and we're going to dissect sort of what the phoenix police response has been <laughs>